Hey folks, winter's coming. We're, we're almost there. Temperatures are starting to get down below freezing. And well, if you're up in the mountains, you're getting snow. It's below freezing at night, even in the 20s. In fact, at my cabin, I saw temperatures in the teens recently. And if you're into off-grid power and you're looking at batteries and you're thinking about LifePo 4s, then you probably know that they don't generally take a charge below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. In fact, that's kind of a loose number. I've seen figures of say 32 plus or minus four degrees. I've even seen some testing where some people got them to charge at lower temperatures. But most modern LifePo 4 batteries have battery management systems that will prevent the batteries from charging below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, not that big of a deal, right? As long as you can get them above freezing, you can charge them back up. But they will discharge down to around minus four degrees Fahrenheit. That could be an issue for you, especially because if your batteries discharge a lot and then they don't get above freezing, how do you charge them back up? Well, the only way to charge them back up is get them above freezing again. And that's an issue. So I think one of the big challenges for people that are moving to LifePo 4s is how to keep them warm. <laughs> that's the challenge. Lead acid batteries, they're fine. They can operate down to pretty extreme temperatures, into well below minus 20, minus 30, even minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. But LifePo 4s can't. So how do you take LifePo 4s, put them in an off-grid cabin, prevent them from freezing, and keep them charging all the time? Well, that's what today's video is all about. And I hope I can answer some of the questions that I've seen by, by folks on my past videos saying, well, how do I keep them warm? What do I do to keep my batteries from dropping below freezing? I need these batteries, or maybe I won't be at my cabin for a couple months at a time. What am I gonna do? Well, today I'm gonna address that and I hope to answer some of those questions. Now, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that I have kind of what I would say the more elaborate style of keeping my batteries warm, and I'll explain that to you here before I get into some of the other methods that you can use. Now, first of all, it is important to keep LifePo 4 batteries from being too cold. Yes, they can get down into the negative temperatures and they should be fine. However, if you're going to get into extreme cold like I was last year, I saw the weather forecast predicting it would get to minus 12 degrees Fahrenheit and then it said minus 15. And my batteries were temporarily installed in my porch, which usually ran about 10 to 20 degrees above outside air temperatures. But you know, at minus say 15 degrees, that might be that the batteries are down to minus five. And when I spoke to the manufacturer of my batteries, they said, get them warmer. For one, they won't charge unless they're above freezing. And for two, there is potential damage when you get into sub-zero temperatures with LiPo 4s. Now, what is that potential damage? Well, believe it or not, it's not actually the battery cells themselves. It's actually the cases, the metals and the plastics contracting in the cold can actually cause cracking. And that's bad for any battery, whether it's lead or LiPo. It doesn't matter. So I had to race up to my cabin, move my batteries into my back room, which happens to be heated, to keep them above freezing, and it all worked out. It was a bit crazy, but we got it done. So that's the first thing I'll talk about. How do I keep my batteries warm in the winter? Back in 2013, when I was moving to my cabin, I decided to build a super insulated back room that would be for my composting toilet, my water, my water heater, everything coming into the cabin, and I had the intention of eventually putting batteries in there. However, at the time I had flooded lead acid batteries, which off gas hydrogen. So you don't wanna put those kind of batteries in a room that has a propane fired instant on hot water heater or a propane heater itself. Now the heater's vented through the wall, but you've still got some open flame. So you can't put lead acid batteries like that in a room where there could be a spark that could ignite hydrogen. Bad things happen. So I didn't put those batteries in there. But what I did for that room, which really paid off for me this last winter, was I put the room two feet below grade and I insulated the ground with R10 foam before I poured my slab. Then after building my walls, I insulated those with R10 foam as well and then backfilled all the dirt around the base of the room. Now that gave me two or more feet of dirt and R10 foam to insulate the floor and lower section of the walls of that room. That's a big help. It makes it a lot easier to keep it warm. Then I built standard two by six walls and actually my sons did it because I was working. 
<laughs> but we built two by six walls that we insulated with R19 foam, and then I put R10 foam on the outside of the walls before siding. That gave me an R30 wall. Now you might say, hey, wait a minute, R19 plus R10 is R29, right? Yes, except that your sheathing on the outside of the wall gives you another R factor of one. So now you've got an R30 wall. For the ceiling, I essentially did the same thing. I put in R21 insulating bats in the ceiling and then I built a sandwich on the roof. I put my first layer of OSB down, that's an R1 factor by the way, then an R10 foam sheet, then another OSB sheet, which gives me about an R34 ceiling. So now I have R30 walls, partially subgrade with an R34 ceiling, and then I put in an 8000 BTU vented through the wall propane heater. Now venting through the wall makes it safe because now it's drawing air from outside of that room. It's not drawing it from inside the room, and it exhausts outside of the room as well, which keeps your moisture down. It's a much better setup. And that little 8,000 BTU heater can easily keep that room above 50 degrees all winter long. In fact, even in minus 30 degree temperatures, that room typically sits above 50 degrees at the floor. Now back then, I didn't have a well insulated door. But now I've got a door that I can close and lock that has seal around the door jamb itself, reflectix on the back of the door, and I just completed a storm door entrance, which will also get insulated. And that will create an airlock chamber between the door of the back room and outside air temperatures, making it even better when it comes to insulation and retaining heat. So I'm pretty set. But what if you don't want to do all that work? Are there things you can do to protect your LifePo4 batteries? Well, yeah, there are. In fact, one of those methods that I've seen, which is super simple, is to put your batteries in a cooler, you know, like an ice chest, because those are well insulated. So if you put your batteries in there and then you run your wires in to, to provide charge and get power from the batteries, close it all up, seal it up nice and tight, the heat generated by the batteries themselves as they charge and discharge can actually keep that space warm. But that may not be enough. So let's talk about some of the other things that you can do to keep your batteries warm and safe in the winter. Now obviously, one of the easiest methods that I've seen mentioned on the internet today, and one of them that I'm gonna talk about today, is having batteries that actually have heaters in them. And I've got today a Vetro battery that frankly is another battery I might call a Will Pros battery. Because <laughs> if you watch Will Pros, you know that he's cut these batteries apart and really looked at them, and they're well-made batteries. So that's number one. We're gonna look at a battery that's, well, the pros look at and say this is an excellent battery battery for the money, but these batteries have built-in heaters. But how do they work? And does it, does it just work off the battery voltage? Because when I first looked at heated batteries, I thought, okay, wait a minute. If it's got a heater that the battery runs, well, wouldn't that drain the battery itself? Well, the answer to that is no. The heater in this Vetro battery only comes on when it's on a charger, and I believe it needs to be providing 10 amps of charge, which isn't very much. You're only talking about 120 watts. So as long as you're getting 100 to 150 watts of power coming into the battery to charge the battery, if these batteries drop below 32 degrees, they kick on a heater and they use that charging power to run the heaters to bring the batteries up to about 42 degrees. Then they'll allow the batteries to begin to take a charge. That's a pretty neat feature, folks. But is it enough? Well, I don't know. We're gonna talk about that. But let's talk a little bit about these Vetro batteries as we go. So first of all, yes, Vetro sponsored this video, so thank you Vetro for that. They do make a great battery, and they've got some really neat features that I think is important. First of all, these have a charge temperature rating of minus four degrees Fahrenheit, with a max of 122. So how do they get a minus four rating for charging? Well, that's because of the heaters. These batteries have a 90 watt internal heater to help them heat up. These have a storage temperature of minus 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that actually surprised me, folks, because most LifePo4 batteries, they recommend storage at 23 degrees and above. Being able to store these down at minus 14 degrees, frankly, that was a real surprise for me to see that. Maybe that's why Will Pros likes this battery. They're also IP65 rated for waterproofing. 
and they've got a five-year warranty. That's pretty impressive. Now these are EV grade cells rated at 5,000 cycles at 100% depth of discharge. Though I did read that these batteries will cut out, I think it's at 10.8 or 10.9 volts, reserving just enough power for the BMSs, so you're not really discharging them all the way 100%. They're gonna hold a little bit of voltage back, but that's an excellent feature. So let's talk about ways to keep these batteries warm. Now, first of all, they've got heaters, but is that enough? Well, one of the methods that I've seen used, which I think is fairly unique, is something called a pop can solar heater. Now you're thinking, wait, what? Yeah. I built one of these several years ago for my porch to help keep my flooded lead acid batteries warm. And it's amazing. It's a four foot by eight foot solar panel essentially built with pop cans. And you can use beer cans, you can use gutter downspouts, really anything that's aluminum. Though I like pop cans or beer cans because those create more turbulence because you're going to drill them out and the holes that you drill out are actually gonna be smaller than the diameter of the can itself. So that means that air traveling through is gonna get a little turbulent going through the cans. That's actually gonna help it heat up even more. Now you might be asking yourself, how well do those things work? Well, I gotta tell you, I've clocked over 200 degrees Fahrenheit at the top of my solar heater. So that's really hot. But guess what? One time, a few years ago, I had a baffle in and a fan, and the fan would come on from a temperature switch that I installed. It would come on at 110 degrees Fahrenheit at the top of the unit. Well, that fan burned out, and without that fan, that baffle on the lower end wouldn't open up. So that solar pop can heater just got hotter and hotter and hotter and I wasn't there. And it had to get about 500 degrees because it literally vaporized the insulation inside of that heater. When I got out there, I couldn't believe it. I thought, where'd all my insulation go? It's gone. And if you look at that heater today, you can see that some of the silicon I used for the first couple rows of cans also actually melted. And that caused two rows of my cans to get loose and kind of fall off kilter a little bit. So now it, it's lost two thirds of its insulation. It's got a couple tubes that are coming apart because there's just so much heat was in there. And yet, once I solved the problem by removing that baffle, that solar pop can heater still works and can warm my porch up quite a bit during the day as long as there's sunlight on it. Now, how would you use that to warm your batteries up? Well, there's a couple ways. One is you could super insulate that pop can solar heater and have a doghouse essentially behind it that your batteries are in. And if you super insulate that doghouse, well, guess what? Now you've got solar heating coming from the sun to keep that nice and warm. And if you use batteries like these Vetters with internal heaters in them as well, that's also gonna help keep that insulated doghouse warm enough so that these batteries, which will also warm up when they're under charge and discharge, it'll keep them safe. Another method you can use is getting something like this. Now this one here, I don't recommend. I will put a link down below for ones I do recommend, but this is actually a seed type heating mat. They work really well. The problem with these is they're 120 volt. So you would have to have an inverter to run that one. However, the ones that you can get on Amazon actually can run off of 12 volt. And if you put a thermostat in with those, and in fact, you can put thermostatic switches in to control the temperatures that they run on and place something like a sheet of metal, a cookie sheet, whatever, between the heating pad and your batteries, you can actually use those heating pads to run off of your batteries to keep that doghouse warm as well. And one of the things you can do, which actually could work quite well, is just run a solar panel in to feed those. Now with LiPo 4s, you could run them directly off the batteries as well. And the beauty of LiPo 4s is they will prevent themselves from being completely discharged. And they've got 5,000 cycles, so it could literally do that every day for 12 years. So it's not really a concern to run those. Now you might ask yourself, why would I do that if I've got self-heating batteries? And quite frankly, I don't think you would need to. The vast majority of the time, the heaters in these batteries should be more than enough to keep them safe during the winter if they're in a well-insulated box. And that's really the key, folks. So if you don't get batteries with internal heaters, you can use those heating pads and run them that way. So obviously a super insulated room, 
with a propane heater with your power units in it is, in my opinion, the best way because that gives you storage all year round as well. Yes, you're gonna have to have a big propane tank. I've got a 500 gallon propane tank, but I never use it all. At most I use maybe 60% over the course of a year, but I also use it to run my generator, my cook stove, my backup heater in my battery room, as well as a backup heater in my cabin that I can use to warm the cabin up when we first get there and I haven't gotten the wood stove fired up yet. I'll always turn that on first, get the wood stove fired up, then turn it off when the cabin reaches about 60 degrees. So that to me is really the best option, but I do think that if you coupled that option with a pop can solar heater, as long as the room faces to the south, of course, and or heating mats or self-heating batteries, which quite frankly takes the work out of it. You just get self-heating batteries, put them in that room. If for some reason that heater fails and that room starts to really get cold and you've got your batteries in a box with internal heaters, you're gonna be fine. Of course, you can just build a dog house and heat it with a pop can solar heater. You might use a smaller solar heater, but even a four by four solar heater would work really well. Or you can use heating pads. But again, uh, you know, a cooler, an insulated box, whatever you've got, anything that you can keep them warm. But I highly recommend you take a look at these Vetra batteries because they've already got the heaters built in. This is a very well-made battery and it's got some great features. In fact, one feature I haven't mentioned yet is that it has a Bluetooth app as well. So you can actually pull up the BMS on your batteries with your cell phone and read their state of charge. <laughs> Discharge, temperatures, cycles, all kinds of information is available on that app as well. And I've got to tell you, I've done several videos about using these batteries for things like powering up a power station. Maybe you've got a 2000 watt hour power station, but you need twice that to keep your fridge running during an outage. Well, if you put a battery on there and it doesn't have a Bluetooth, well, all you can do is wait till the battery dies. But if you've got these Vetra batteries with a Bluetooth app, you can see the state of charge on your battery while you're providing power to your power station. So now you'll have a better idea of when you need to put a charger on that battery versus you're just gonna wait till it dies. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, these Vetra batteries actually pretty much impressed me. So folks, if you're worried about LifePo 4s and cold weather, I think there are so many good solutions out there today that you can use to keep them warm. You put these batteries in a super insulated box or an ice, or an ice chest, a cooler, they're gonna stay warm. You're not gonna have an issue with having them freeze up on you and not work or, or get damaged in the winter time. So folks, to recap, these Vetra batteries have got internal heaters, so if you could put these batteries in a well-insulated doghouse, maybe throw a pop can solar heater on there as well, You've got a, a you know, set of solar panels that's providing at least a 10 amp charge to these batteries, then they're gonna warm up and then take a charge. And they can do that every single day. Yes, if you get a few months where you're just not getting any solar generation, well then any solution like that isn't gonna work as well as a propane heater. But even then, because these can store down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit, I wouldn't worry about it because eventually you're going to get that solar heating. And I've seen my pop can solar heaters run just fine in the coldest temperatures where there really isn't much sun. I've also seen my solar panels produce power, enough power to run these heaters in these batteries, even when they're covered in snow. That's pretty crazy, but I have seen that work. So there's lots of options out there to keep your batteries warm, especially with these internal heaters today. That's a fantastic option. I love that, and I'm gonna be installing these in my Arctic Fox all-season camper because I can be assured that as long as they've got charge coming in, they're not gonna freeze. They're gonna take their charge. They're gonna do what I need them to do when I'm out there in the woods. That's gonna be awesome, and I love that. So thank you, Vetra, for sending me these batteries and sponsoring this video. Folks, that's all I've got for you today. I'm gonna to drop another video right here for you to check out. Thanks for watching, folks. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.